Hey, welcome to another episode of the Motor Age How-To video series, The Trainer. Engine management systems are getting awful complex and the computer in charge, the engine control module, is responsible for making sure that everything works the way it's supposed to. If it detects a problem, it lets the driver know by turning on the check engine light. Now the way it tests the systems can be used by the technician to not only improve their diagnostic capability, but to make sure that the repair is verified once you're done. Because after all, the ECM now becomes your customer. If you don't properly repair it so that the ECM tests will pass, the check engine light will come back on and your customer will just plain come back. Like I said, understanding how the ECM tests its subsystems is, goes a long way into helping you develop a diagnostic strategy for determining the cause of that check engine light or that diagnostic trouble code. Uh, just reading the definition is, uh, of the code in your scan tool is not enough. I want to put as a side note here, we all know of individuals or situations where a customer has gone to someone and had the pu code pulled uh, they see that there's a, a component named in the code like O2 sensor or MAP sensor or whatever and they're told that you replace that part and everything will be fine and dandy. We as professionals know that the ECM cannot tell us exactly what went wrong. It can point us in the right direction though. It's up to us to understand exactly what that, that problem was and then use a, a proven diagnostic strategy to find it. Hopefully the information that we're going to talk about today will help. Um, very first thing I want to tell you. If you have a diagnostic trouble code pulled, the very first thing that I want you to do is take the moment to sit down and review that code's definition. You need to know exactly what the computer is testing and how. You also need to know exactly what the criteria is before that code can be tested. Did you know that some codes, once they're set, can keep other systems from being tested and codes from setting there? That often goes back to bite you in the butt. Yes, you fixed the problem that the car came in with. But because the code was set for that particular system, other systems on the car could not be tested and there was another problem hiding that you didn't know about. Light comes back on, the customer comes back, and he ain't happy. So take the time to make sure you understand all you can about what the code definition is, how it's set, what the criteria is used for set, and as important, how does the computer make that There's test. really three basic tests that the computer uses to determine a problem. Now it may use these in combination, it may be a single test, it may be a multiple test in order to set a specific code. You'll learn that in your, in your, in your research. But there are three basic methods that the computer is going to use and that you can use to uh, verify your repair and, and diagnose and find the problem in the first place. The first one that I'm going to talk about is a circuit integrity test. Now what's a circuit integrity test? Well as the name implies, it's a test by the computer of the overall electrical health of the circuit uh, for a particular component or system. Uh, it's testing for open circuits, it's testing for shorts to power, and it's testing for shorts to ground. And often you'll see that reflected in the code name on your scan tool. For example, O2 sensor circuit low, or O2 sensor circuit shorted to ground. Something along those lines that will give you an indication of where your problem is. If you're dealing with a circuit integrity test, then you want to make sure that that's exactly how you look for and verify the problem. Use your, your uh, voltmeter, use voltage drop testing techniques, review the schematic, understand exactly what it is that the computer is looking for. The second type of test that I want to talk about is a functional test. Now a functional test is when the computer is uh, looking at a system or component in the way that it normally works and then using other parameters to judge whether it did indeed function as designed. Now, a functional test by the ECM can be done in one of two ways. It can be passive or it can be intrusive. Now, what's the difference? A passive test is one where the computer has taken no direct action in order for that system or component to be tested. It's just monitoring it under its normal operating conditions. Let's think about EGR for a moment. We all know that EGR is not supposed to be there at idle. It's supposed to be there at cruise speeds. So when the computer knows that the EGR is supposed to be on, it's going to look for a parameter that is going to verify that opening. Perhaps there's a position sensor. 
Perhaps there is a, a DPFE sensor, as in the case of Ford, uh, early 40 GR. Um, perhaps there's a, chi a shift in fuel trim or O2 sensor voltage or something along these lines that it knows should occur at the time the EGR is commanded on. That's a passive test. An intrusive test is one where the computer is taking an active part in the test of the system or component. In other words, it's going to turn on or off a system or component when it's not normally in that state. Uh, for example, it may turn the EGR system on at idle to see if it does indeed um, detect a change, oh, I don't know, an intake manifold vacuum, or again, in the short-term fuel trim response or something to verify that, hey, this came on when I told it to. And that's an intrusive test or active test. So, and all together, again, that's a functional uh, test of a system or component. Now, the third type of test is a rationality test. A rationality test is one where the computer is looking at one system or component and he's comparing it to another data parameter to see if the two agree with each other or make sense. Uh, the easiest example I can give you of that is a TPS throttle position sensor versus a mass airflow sensor. If the TPS is telling the computer that the throttle is wide open but the mass airflow is telling the computer that very little air is flowing, well those two things don't agree and the computer knows there's an issue. Uh, it may add additional tests to verify exactly what that issue is, uh, but that's an example of a rationality test, where the computer is actually going to take a look at, at what one thing is doing and compare it to what something else is doing to see if the two agree. And just like with the functionality test, these can also be passive or intrusive. You know, one of the common mistakes that I see techs make uh, when they're struggling with, with repairing a check engine-like complaint or diagnostic trouble code, really in any module, is uh, really twofold. Number one, they didn't take the time to fully understand what the code definition was, what the conditions for testing were, what type of tests were being run. Um, they just saw the name in the, in the scan tool and then went searching for the silver bullet. Well, sometimes they exist, sometimes they don't. Uh, the second one is, hey, you got to check the technical service bulletins. Now, that needs to be right off at the very start. Often, depending on who you talk to, uh, upwards of 40% of drivability issues on, on later model vehicles is a result of software, and it requires a reprogramming. And, you know, you can troubleshoot all day long. You're not going to find that. Um, and the third, again, is taking the time to do the homework, understanding how the tests were made, incorporating that into their diagnostic strategies. Um, they'd rather grab the flow chart. That's okay. I like the flow chart as a resource, but uh, don't just follow it blindly. If you don't understand what tests you're making and why, uh, you may walk right over the problem and not even know it. Uh, take the time to understand how the ECM is doing what it's doing, how the code is set, use that information to locate and repair the source, and then verify the fix once you're done. Well, that's all the time we got for this edition of the trainer. I'm Pete Meyer. I'll see you next month.